G'day and welcome to our video on the classic 1959 Model 5 Victor lawnmower. The Victor 18 of course refers to the 18 inch cut. It's the model down there on the left hand side, the bottom left, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a video on it. But before we get too far into it I want to talk a little bit about the cost of these things and uh, other items that were available at the time of course. Back then was pre-decimal currency. We work now in the decimal system since 1966 which is converted as follows. Uh, 12 pence is equal to about a shilling, 20 shillings to a pound, and one pound is equal to two dollars. So roughly on that uh, conversion you're looking at around 10 shillings being equal to a dollar, uh, less inflation. So some of the items back in 1959 you might have, might have bought rather, just like today's a postage stamp. Postage stamps were five pence, which is equal to four cents, of course, with inflation. You're looking at 62 cents on today's dollar. Uh, a loaf of bread's another one, 18 pence, which converts to 15 cents. Of course, converted to today's money is about $2.22, which is around what you pay. Um, and of course, sugar being the other one is 10 pence, which is equal to eight cents. <laughs> and on today's money is $1.23. Now we can also consider some of the larger items you might consider buying. Of course, a brand new Holden back then was 910 pounds which converts to $26,911.32 using the inflation calculator. And so you can see when you start looking at things like mowers at 45 pounds, four shillings, uh, that is quite a lot of money. Now larger items such as homes were not as expensive as they probably could have been. Of course, this house was purchased in 1959 for the sum of 3,500 pounds, which with inflation, uh, comes to $103,505 of course that place now is worth well over $1 million given that uh, real estate here seems to double around every eight years so you can see some things have changed considerably now here's our mower here this is our lovely little Victor 18 not being touched unrestored and not running so I picked this up for the sum of $166.50 from a seller on eBay and the thing that attracted me most to this was the fact that it had all its original books uh, in a sleeve which has a little eyelet to be hung with a piece of string I guess on the handlebars and it's guarantee. And so our special model was very expensive on the 2nd of May 1959 22 pounds 13 shillings was put down of course three weeks later or so on the 21st a final 30 pounds which gives a total of 52 pounds 13 shillings now on today's money that converts to $1,557. Now we have the special model, there was also a standard model available which was £10 cheaper and that still rolls in at $1,242, a fortune if you like. Now a push mower, a cheap push mower now, a new one, $299, $300 in that area. Um, of course the top of the range one with battery start and the wide cut and everything, you'd be looking up around those sorts of figures now I would think. So uh, that's a lot of money given that the average wage of a man in uh, 1959 was 13 pounds a week. Of course, the poor ladies only scored nine pound 15 shillings. So either way you look at it, our mower was very, very expensive. Of course, Victor being Victor named their mowers after cars. That's the standard and special, the same as Holden. Of course, there were Corvettes and Mustangs and all sorts of other stuff as well. This picture is out of the manual. It shows you what the difference is between the standard and the special. And there's a list of features on both of them, of course. At first glance, you can see the standard has the steel base plate. The special has the alloy one and a different height adjuster with a pair of gearboxes and a milled nut, of course. The special also has that funky muffler, which fires underneath the mower as well. Uh, there are other options and bits and pieces that I don't know about. I think the Special also has a spanner. I'm not sure if the standard has that. I can't see in the picture at the moment while I'm narrating this, but uh, there are some options as well. And of course, the first one that comes to mind is the Zip Start. And these things do come up on eBay. That's that down on the right-hand side. People do ask quite a bit of money for those. Of course, the original handles like hen's teeth to get. And that picture also shows you at the top where the spanner attaches to. Now, one thing this mower did come with, which... Um, I wasn't aware of that they had and that's the clip on the safety rim. There's a bloke on eBay asking $100 for one of those which I reckon is pure extortion but that is another feature that this mower came with. So of course we'll begin the video now. There's another uh, two Super Swift mowers that I've added to this little collection of four. Of course you've seen the first Victor which was the one we pulled out from under the house. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please leave comments as you feel necessary. Lawn mowers. Well, we've amassed a few of them now. We've still got our lovely uh, old Victor we repaired in the first video and our bricks for a buck. We've got that in bits. Um, but there's four more. 
well, you've seen the one on the left, the Victor Mayfair. That was when we found the rubbish pile that was under the house for 15 years, and of course, it ended up running like a Swiss watch. But these other three here, beginning with the Victor 18, is quite a unique one. These come up a lot for sale on eBay. They're always looking for a new home. Many of them are restored and people are looking for $400 for them. One guy was looking for $600 for him. I think that's dream time. I don't think they're worth anything like that. Now, that one has never been touched. It's never been apart. And it came with its original books. And I picked it up for $166.50. The Falcon 4 Super Swift, this bronze colored one here, um, was sold as an on-runner for 45 bucks, and of course the red and green Super Swift at the end there was a good runner, and I paid $75 for that. Now lawnmowers are a little bit like old cameras. You can find lots and lots of them in good condition, and they're never worth much. Uh, unless there's something really, really unique about them, then you can get a bit of coin back for them. But they're not huge, expensive machines. The two Victors are two strokes on the left, the two Super Swifts are both four strokes. The one I would have liked was a two-stroke, similar to the one on the very right, the green and red one, that has the Villiers engine. They're quite, um, quite hard to come by. There was actually a written uh, memo to sellers of lawnmowers back in 1975 promoting the Villiers-powered Super Swift as though having trouble selling them. And that's the one, of course, uh, my, <laughs> my dad ended up with. He, he ended up buying one. And it was a brilliant, brilliant mower. You can see the chute on the right-hand side of the mower, on our left, is a dangerous thing. So we'll talk about each of these. We've done the one on the Mayfair on the left. Uh, this one here, I've had quite a few people say they'd like to see restored. Um, I've no bones with doing that. I've got no bones with fixing up this one here. I don't know if it runs. I assume it probably would, but a guy sold as a non-runner. This one I heard, it runs like a train. That's all good. But the one I would never restore is that 18 because it's so original. I think I'll take advisement from anyone that wanting to leave comments uh, if you think it's an unwise move to fix it. So let's wheel that one out now and have a bit of a look. Okay, a week ago I didn't know anything about these things. I've been watching some videos, watching some advertisements, that sort of thing about them. Uh, Gentleman Wicked XE is his YouTube name, I think. His name's Darren, I'm not sure. Um, he has one, the same model as this, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same model. This is a 1959. This of course comes with all its original books and I'll, just, I'll go through all that in a moment. There's a few things to note on it. And things that um, he pointed out in his video. There's a, can we see where my finger's pointing? Yeah, there's a grub screw down the bottom or a bung if you like, a plug at the bottom of the crankcase. Um, which is apparently for the fact that early carburetors like this are prone for flooding and that's where you drain the crankcase from if you get flooding. This bracket here looks like it's for some sort of edger attachment or some other attachment, not sure. There are a couple of prototype attachments, uh, very, very, very rare indeed. They never actually made it into production as far as I'm aware, and there's a plastic cover that's meant to be on there. The uh, other thing is standard original carburetor. Its patina is genuine. There's, it would be the easiest thing in the world to restore, but I just don't want to. I think perhaps the best thing to do would be a sympathetic restoration where we retain its patina. We take the wheels off and we clean them up and there's a bent axle, you can see that the rear wheel is splayed a little bit. The bog dust in the garage here from the filler I've been using is only tracked on the inside, so that wheel is sitting out like that. It's really, really, really um, cambered. It's got electrical tape on it we can get rid of. It's got a few other bits and pieces that are a bit unsavory. There's paint that spills on it, but it does peel off with one's fingernails. I got some off yesterday. I was on a different angle, but that looks like it's going to come off, so we're all good. The thing I like for it, though, is a couple of things. There's spanner brackets under the bars here. The trouble with things like this, of course, there's one on eBay now in bits, and the guy's just doing what I've seen a lot of old car guys do, and he's selling it bit by bit, and he's asking pretty stupid prices. Um, at least I think they are. Some things like spanners do turn up on eBay. You see them for 50 bucks, 80 bucks, this sort of thing. I don't think they're worth anything like that. Um, and I'm not prepared to pay that for it. Uh, you know, a reasonable price, of course. You know. The thing I reckon would be quite expensive on it, though, is this Victor signage here. It's a plastic thing, only the remnants of that one are left. And um, that's also worth... Uh, that would be a thing worth getting. This thing turns. Sounds like there's all sorts of leaves and everything caught under there. I think the best thing to do with this is to pull it apart and clean everything properly. 
I dare say there's a bunch of leaves or there's something up in that shroud there uh, that's causing that that sort of noise. So we can pop the a few parts off and have a look. This um, air cleaner slash chuck assembly is supposed to be mounted lower down, I believe down here somewhere. This is quite an unusual bit of kit. It's a plastic air cleaner housing which comes apart like so. Um, of course the air filter adapters in there, or the air filter elements in there. So this has been joined with a washer and some sort of tubing. And the choke itself is just there. It runs inside the pipe. So for hot running and starting, and for choke, you would pretty much close that off. Depending on where the, um, it's got a stop there and it's got one there. I don't know, I think that's too much if it's turned off completely, but we have to figure that out. Where's the best place for it to run? I'd be inclined to start up that knee cleaner on it. A couple of other points to note. Fuel tank is empty. Can we see in there? There's some sludge, some oil sludge in there. That needs to be cleaned out. Um, and that's not going to be too difficult to do. The other thing I've noticed is the fuel cock or the tap is very, very loose. Perhaps attributed to a very, very um, badly worn or disintegrated o ring. That should be too hard to fix. Very old fashioned cotton braided fuel line or fabric braided. There's our tickler. It all looks pretty good. I'm just going to tilt it up like that. Oh, damage that air cleaner housing. And of course, here's our underside here. Those blades are absolutely knackered. I'd be inclined to put the deck back on or put the rotor back on without the blades attached. Don't know. I don't like the look at that. Um, tires and wheels are in good nick. Nothing wrong with those. There's our drain bung we were talking about before, and our serial number, and of course, they yeah, rather spiffy looking muffler. Now, there are two spec levels of these, there's a standard and a special, is that right? It's like a Holden if you like. This is the special, it has an alloy cutting deck, I think the standard one was pressed steel. The standard also has a, um, a round muffler, not this um, finned one that goes underneath the mower. A few other subtle differences, I can't remember what they are. The height adjust is different. This uses a worm drive um, arrangement like this with a pair of gearboxes, one here and one at the back. And it also came with a cover that goes down the bottom. Because this has a nickname of being a toe cutter, you can fit your toe under there. Um, and of course, and dice them off. I think the cat needs feeding. Okay, so here is the um, skirt that fits on the bottom. I'm not even familiar how it goes yet. I haven't paid any attention to it, but it was clipped onto the mower when I bought it and it fell up in the car in transit home. Um, it's patina is gorgeous. I, I really do think that restoring this would be a mistake. I'd love to paint the bars, redo them all. That's the wrong rope, obviously. It really does need some attention, but I don't know that it's going to need too much. Um, a good sympathetic restoration might be the way to go with this. I'd be very keen to get people's comments and see what they think. Should we just clean it up and leave it be? Which is what I intend to do. But uh, if everyone reckons not restore it properly, then we'll, we'll look at doing that. Um, a few bits needing attention, obviously this hose is too long. I think that, as I said before, mounts down here. I'm not sure. Um, of course, I'd love one of those. I don't know where the heck you get one of those. I thought about using clear plexiglass and putting a Victor thing on it, but it wouldn't look right. Um, obviously a new fuel line down there. Uh, fix up that splayed wheel down there. As you can see, the blade hanging out there. Picks up that splayed wheel, you can see it hanging out there. That would be that um, stub axle, for want of a better word. It's got a twist in it. We can get that back, that's fine. This one's okay here. This one's got a twist in it, so that's not a big deal. The mounting hardware for that air cleaner is obviously wrong. That wing nut doesn't look right. The other screw does. There is sort of a, a sheet metal screw with a large standard head. So, I mean, we can source one of them. I've probably got one of those here. But all in all, a fantastic 
fantastic bit of kit. The first thing we'll do is we'll pop this rotor off. And um, I just want to get those blades off. Whoa. Fix my airline. That was painless. Gosh. See, this is the problem. It's not even on the nylock part. That's not good. It'll give us a chance to clean out all that gunk as well. I'll go and get a different tripod so you can see what I'm doing. So this will give you some look at what one of these things looks like underneath. Here's the rotor, of course. It's rusty on one side and it's got oily residue on the other. The exhaust fires into this sort of chamber here. I guess the long grass and the rotational uh, action of the rotor will sort of act as some sort of muffler um, in addition to what the other one had um, in terms of baffling. So that all looks fairly clean and good. A bit of nonsense around there which we can dig out. Um, my main concern is to get these blades off. These blades look absolutely terrible. And um, I think we'll just pop those off now with a zap gun. If I've got the right socket with me, which I don't. Hang on, what have I done with that? I thought I brought it with me. There it is, it's under the camera. This has been brazed by the look of it, which I don't. Ah, it's cracked. This isn't good. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a moment. There's a cap, obviously not, and the blade, that's tetanus waiting to happen, isn't it? So these bits, we don't throw them away, there's a bush in there too, though, it? but look at this, we're cracked, and we've got brazing around it, that's not cool, we don't want that, so I think I'll look for another rotor for it, so I'll just take this one off, this one's also bent, if you look at that, it's in a bit of a bad way. Now the fact that's been brazed is not good. We've got a crack running from here and it's going down to here. Can't even see what I'm talking about, can you? So the fact that this has been brazed isn't good. We've got a crack running from the perimeter right down. I can see the end of it there. Now we can drill it, but we can't weld that because somebody's brazed it. And I would prefer to weld it properly. On second thoughts, I'd sooner another rotor. I, I just don't think that's very good. I don't know if the light's terribly good, but it'll be fine to start the thing on because um, we don't have blades. So straight off the bat, that's a lot better. It's not in very good nick at all, but it'll be all right. I suppose the next thing we can do is we'll do a musty one and check for spark. And. Um, we're not expecting anything with this, like see, any mower, it might not be any good, it might just be an ornament. Could have a bit of ratchet with me. This will tell us a little bit about the dog. It'll tell us that I should have blown that copious amounts of crap out before I undid this. Rightio, so we've got a plug that's bridged. That will not spark. It's actually got a piece of stuff caught in it. I'm just going to clean that off. Can we see that? You probably can't even see what I'm talking about. Can you see? Where is it there? I don't know. Anyway, I'll clean that and we'll just check and see what it's got. A bit of old wet and dry from the body work I'm doing at the moment. But this should tell us. Now, judging from the lawnmowers I've been playing with, which isn't many of them, these things tend to lose spark quickly through point issues. It's got a bloody spark, hang on a minute. See down there. Can you see that? It's sparking well. <laughs> How about that? That's what these noises will be. All this sort of muck. Right, move it. Uh, really? It's not much good. It just smells like oil. Oh, uh, did she? Yeah. Our dog's not well, we're just talking about the dog. Rightio, so we'll take these off. I'm not sure if that actually holds any on. There's an optional pull starter that these could be 
bought with. Um, I don't know what holds this whole shroud on it, it's just these two here. Don't know. Let's just take them out and see what happens, eh? That would help if I took that out, wouldn't it? That would certainly help. There we go. There could be red backs or anything under here. Red backs are a deadly Aussie spider. No red backs, but a massive bit of cooch grass. All right. That is not going to do much. I kind of want to get that off. Have a look in there, clean all that. Hmm. It's got a spark though. So I don't know if it's going to be worth sort of taking any more off it. Not sure. All those fins are in great condition. The housing is beautiful. Look at that. I can take the tank off. There's a nut there and that strap will release the tank. We can clean it out. We'll take that fuel tap off and we'll figure what on earth is going on there. There's an O-ring I think meant to be in the end of it. There's nothing, nothing there. But it doesn't feel like there's any sort of resistance. It just sort of flops around like an old flounder. But that's in beautiful condition. Absolutely lovely. A lot better than some of the ones I've seen um, people advertise. And this is why I don't want to restore this. I just want to do a sympathetic job on it. So what do we do, hey? Do you reckon we should pop that off and have a look? I think we'll clean that carburetor bowl out. Yeah, that was really hard to get off. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pop that out. That's the slide. Worth hex and jet. <laughs> so I think I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to release that. From very familiar with this stuff from my old motorcycle days. Except this bit. Not familiar with this. Perhaps we're going to do that there. We're just going to take that off good. All right then, because I want to stick these in a bag. I don't want that stuff flopping around. That's in beautiful condition as well. So, I think we'll just take that off. Very simple carburetor. No choke. The choke, as we said, is on the hand control. We can pop that nut off. There's a fibre washer there. And we can clean the bowl and have a look at that later. Looks like we can use a... Um, a port job. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll take this off. This has like a keeper with three position things for there. That will keep the um, threads clear for a pour. Right, so what I thought I'm just going to pop this off. I know it works, but you know what I want to do? I've been thinking, I went and had a nap, and I, always, I nap, I'm like an old man. And what I'm thinking is I might just look at it, and it'll give me a chance to, um, it's going to cost anything in parts. I just want to take everything off, clean it up properly, and then put it back on, including the deck. I don't like the deck, it's all dirty. Um, so I've sort of steamed ahead. There's no bits in these, there's nothing to them. It's the most simple, it's the most simple mower. These are just quarter inch. I've tried one of those screws before and went straight in. It must be in this hole here. Mm, quarter inch coarse. And you know what? I don't think we want to paint anything. Normally I'd take the barrel off and paint that black and polish up the head and all this. I don't know, I just want to clear it up. Is it going to sit there? Yeah, might as well. Where's my shifter? I can feel it coming up now. I should have been a lawnmower mechanic. It's easier than being a car mechanic. Particularly two strokes. Nothing in them. And it's cool, like my father-in-law passed away a couple of years ago. The fourth episode of the XC I paid tribute to him. And he, his wife said to me, go in the garage, take whatever you want. And I felt bad taking it, but I took all these old screws and bolts and nuts and things. And Lou being Lou had them really well organised. And that's what... I've got loads of this stuff. I'm going to have stuff like that too. And he was so helpful in life and he's also still helping me. 
come on, you son of a gun, get off. Come on, you son. Here we go. <laughs> Look at the coil. Jeez, really primitive in there, isn't it? Where did that key go? Look at that, it looks like a freaking potato. Alright, let's have a look. It's lovely and clean in there. Jeez, that's gonna be fragile as hell. All that stuff. Christ, that goes underneath. Oh, that's the high tension lead. And the coil is actually loose on the core. I don't think we want to touch that. There's the condenser. Points. Oh, that's the key. <laughs> Points are there. Can we see that? See the points? Oh, are they gorgeous? All right, so I think we'll clean it all up. That'll just clean out with a brush. I'm a bit nervous actually to muck around with this because it is, it's just so bloody old. I think I'll just clean the points and stick that thing back on. Clean all this up. These are all lovely, these surfaces. That's the reason, too, that we had a spark. The one thing I never do is chuck toothbrushes out. Whether you're a mechanic or a detailer or whatever, you always, always use them. So, you know what? I'm going to leave this. I keep going through my mind. You know what I'm doing. I keep saying to myself, oh, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to clean it. And then I think to myself, it's actually clean. I'm just going to clean what I can see and just leave it. Um, I'd like to get something like that with some brake clean and just clean out those fins, just make all this look nice. Because if I only take that off, I'm going to be blowing gaskets and all this sort of stuff. But while I've got this off, I am going to clean those points. I'm watching the sky like a hawk. It was supposed to rain today and that Plymouth there hasn't got glass in it. Anyone who watches my videos know that I always crap on about that. But... <laughs> A bit of wet and dry in here, straight. It's got a bit of bog dust in it, but she'll be right. Bog dust never hurt anyone. Well, it probably did, but hopefully it doesn't hurt me. Those points actually look a bit rooted. They're um, they're a bit off, but I think they're going to be all right. I might just pop a tiny bit of grease on there. I'll take the plug out So I can turn the engine over nice and easily. Yeah, just a spot of grease there. I think what we might do is bang the flywheel back on and see if the spark's any stronger. All right. I just don't want to mess with it too much, you know? That coil, seriously, baked potato. What do you reckon? It's just, this is so squeaky inside. I think by not painting anything, because anything can be restored, but they're only the original ones. That's what all they, that's what all the people in the know say, and they're right. So anyway, Dave Raymaker's rocks up today. We had to um, take the head of the engine out of the XL again um, because some of the threads were stripped in the cylinder head where you put the cam box on. That's not lined up still. Um, and he came and helped me take it out again. And he put recoils in it. I think that's nearly right. And um, we got that done. I want to keep that lined up. I'm trying to swing back and get that straight. That retainer. All right. I can hear it clicking away. Hello. Giving it a bit of a spruce up. We know it's got spark, it's gonna go. How well it goes is a different thing. So while I've got bits off it, I reckon we just do what we can to make it look a bit better. Loki, that looks beautiful. Down there doesn't look pretty crap, but what do you do? So that's it for this one. Uh, I'm not sure when the next one will be. I want to finish the doors and petrol tank uh, for the motorcycle painting video as well. I've got most of that done. And there's a bit more on the XL as well. 
of course, we can return to this at any time, uh, particularly when it rains. It's a great job for that sort of thing. It's a lovely bit of kit. Look at the cylinder. It looks like that alien thing off American Dad. Well, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, put a bit more into this one than I normally do in the videos, just researching a little bit and um, coming up with a few figures. So I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Ta-da. I'll, I'll try and... Look at this. Look at this. I'm turning the camera off. You can see my hand. Hello. And I'm going for the stop button.